So it's, it's, uh, it's very nice to have actually this kind of, uh, that is more and more common. Uh, it should be being good to have also a kind of microestimation with the back on the envelope computation, because I think that's the three kind of ways of doing policy that speak to each other. But I feel, so they have to justify why you have to listen uh, something that is going to be uh, much less uh, sophisticated in the framework, but uh, I believe uh, that uh, is uh, helpful. One of the things uh, for which you should listen here, for example, to this presentation is the following. Um, I don't know what, what, what is the historical reason why they started to have uh, childcare with the means tested, the, they say they even nonlinear uh, income tax. I, I, I tend to believe that is because they learn from uh, kind of the literature I'm trying to, pre to present. In particular, for example, there was this uh, a uh, requirement, okay, of uh, the income within below a threshold. So the question is, why do they consider this constraint? Does it ma does it make sense to have? Why not the opposite? Why not having the childcare subsidies only eligible for people with income above such thresholds? That's one question. It does make sense. Why? Because high productivity guys, you may want to increase their lab supply. So why you should focus on the other one, okay? So one of the things that I hope kind of vaguely you will learn from this presentation is that this makes more sense than the opposite. And why? Okay, one of the things uh, uh, for this. So in other terms, I'm going to talk about the design of optimal childcare subsidies in terms of understanding what are the you know, the trade-offs, the, the, the forces that shape, like, the, the features of childcare, and I try to do some very stylized quantitative uh, analysis of that, okay? So I think there's a lot of complementarity, although my quantitative analysis is going to be uh, very stylized in the sense that I'm going to consider, at least for now, a static model, so, yeah, kind of... Uh, so, but still, I want to have uh, this broad motivation. There are big numbers, this kind of... Uh, uh, the motivation of all these debates are kind of uh, the huge increase in, that I'm sure you know better than I do, uh, on uh, labor force participation of mothers, especially for young children, and hold all these questions, what, how should we take care of them? And, you know, there are not only a uh, large number of uh, costs for childcare, but also public expenditure are kind of large, like 21 million in U.S., and indeed, you know, there is more than 50% of the children that are actually in uh, non-relative childcare. And so it's a big stuff uh, to be considered. Of course, the questions that in a way uh, was asked before is why, there should, whether there should be, and if, if, if there is a need of some policy intervention, what is uh, uh, the shape of it and how it is compared to existing ones. Eh? In particular, whether we want to learn uh, how to intervene, we should also understand uh, whether the existing one are completely screwed up or make sense or not, okay? So just to quickly review, I'm, again, I'm sure this is more for, you know, when I present on a theorist uh, and they say, okay, guys, uh, and there is a structural program for uh, uh, child care subsidies, uh, and there are two features that I would like to emphasize on the U.S. There are some work requirements and for, for receiving them, and there are kind of sliding scale, that is, they are decreasing with income, sort of this kind of stuff, in a way. This is trying to capture this, uh, this, this kind of constraint here. So the other aspect of these uh, programs is they emphasize on child quality, one third of them, and two thirds actually, uh, they are more uh, related to working, they're promoting employment, okay? The previous paper and also this paper is more about the second aspect of it. So what is uh, kind of the contribution to the debate here? Um, we will uh, try to study, does it make sense to have some childcare at all? Okay. And uh, I will argue that this, yes, makes sense. And I will try to argue that it's coming from a very basic uh, 
all the rigorous principle that you should subsidize childcare. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to make uh, as a main point. Again, the characteristics here, I, I think I can save time uh, with this audience of the characteristics. Uh, in the US, there are two main uh, kind of schemes, uh, the dependent care tax credit and the child care development fund. Here you can use their characteristics uh, to, to, to map into rates of, uh, of child care, the, uh, you know. I'm not talking about uh, child benefits. Uh, I have other projects in which, uh, uh, you know, if you have a kid, you should receive more or less money. This is more about the margin, yeah? So that's complete, the point is about margins. And there is actually a huge variety across uh, US states, actually, on how it is. So again, you know, it's easy to get the right number if this is such a huge uh, heterogeneity. So uh, I, you know, good, because then any number I would get is like maybe somewhere here. So <laughs> it's okay. So uh, there will be always a state that is not doing that bad. So uh, nobody will, uh, okay, in a way. Well, but there is only one point. They are all kind of uh, with one qualitative characteristic. They are sliding scale. They are all kind of decreasing. Although the level mm, could be because of generosity, many things one can ask about that. But definitely, there's some feature that are kind of sliding. Eh? Maybe the bottom here, you can even argue that not that much. But you know. So as I repeat, we are going to focus on employment related programs, so not focusing on quality. That is a very important issue, but a bit complicated. Uh, we are thinking about that, of course. And uh, the way we do is uh, to extend and release optimal tax model, but by allowing informal child care activity. Very simple extension to the, to the more standard uh, optimal taxation mode. And then uh, what we do, usual exercise, we study the efficient uh, allocation, we propose an implementation and try to do some quantitative analysis. The results, I think that you, know, you can retain from, from the analysis. I hope you will remember these three points. First of all, as I say, there is a basic point for positive childcare subsidies. You, I mean, depends on the parameterization, but this parameterization is more about the linearity of the thing. There is a very simple way to implement it with a linear childcare subsidy scheme. I'm not talking about the lump sum payments. Eh? Um, and uh, the characteristic is the rate, although it's linear, this rate should decrease with labor income. Yeah, give me, this is uh, a TUI. You don't see stage of introduction and you don't tell us why it should become Yeah, I mean, some people want a recipe, so I want to give them. But, uh, hey. And then the, the, what I'm finding is the less generous, uh, uh, the optimal one are less generous than existing ones. Just, just recognition, when you say linear, is it linear? Linear in the, in the, in how much you spend on the child, a conditional income. So it's, non, it's not in non-linear. It's like a, a subsidy that is linear, like uh, I was showing, like uh, the percentage, but it's conditional income. So it's known. So as a function of income, Yes, it is actually decreasing, but as a fashion, how much you spend in childcare does not have to be complicated. It's kind of in that sense. Okay. So, literature, uh, maybe I can skip that. You know, that, I mean, there is really nobody that is studying this, this, this question uh, with this, uh, within this uh, optimal taxation framework. Uh, the only one that can be related are. Uh, um, models where you can think about uh, secondary work production. Uh, they study other different things. The closest one is maybe this one, which is very vaguely saying, very generic production function, but basically it's observable hours, so it's not really a Mirlis model. The, there are papers, I mean, here, you know, I cite only uh, very few of them, you know, like, uh, uh, there, there are a lot of uh, studies that try to, you know, quantify, eh? it's more, um, a quantification here, they are not using this optimal taxation framework. And as I said, I, I, I hope I will convince you that there is a complementarity between what I do and what this uh, kind of exercise are doing. So, th what 
Yes. Uh, can I go to the model and then? Yes. So the friction will be uh, you want to redistribute the usual kind of reasons, and uh, childcare subsidies uh, activities in childcare will generate an extra margin that you want to discourage because this will help uh, redistribution. Essentially. Yes, No, but that, that, that's all distorted ta taxation has to be with the redistribution in a sense, right? So otherwise you do lump sum. Eh? Yeah, but any model, you know, we, so, uh, redistribution in the sense, you want to distort the taxation uh, in a sense. Uh, although, yeah. So the agents uh, have uh, additive separable preferences here to, to simplify. Uh, the utility here is concave, that's the idea, basically, the motivation for a distribution. Um, so it's very simple, the simplest you can imagine for, the pre for making rigorous the principle I'm, I'm saying, I just said with a word. Um, there are, you can spend time in two activities, uh, either work or uh, child care, and there are heterogeneous productivities. Uh, and to simplify, it's the simplest model I can imagine um, that you need uh, to take care of the kid, you need one unit of effort. Eh? Of course, you can use, uh, uh, you can spend yourself the time with the kid, then of course, that's the idea that is reducing lab supply. So, Nicole, but I'm going to have other taxes as well. So, can have, is, is it like, is, is this whole thing going to be like taxing differentially depending on some characteristics? Not uh, about that. Is, uh, you, I'm treating them equally, and the, 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 dif the key difference among how much I should uh, subsidize or not is about your productivity. I have to infer it from your income, your productivity. You're going to treat me differently if I have a child. If I don't Definitely, have but uh, this paper is not about that. They will all have a child, the one I'm focusing on. Ah, so, okay. that sense. The, the, the study whether you should treat differently with a child, without a child, includes in particular child subsidy that is not child care subsidies that I'm starting, for example, with GIP. Mm -hmm. So is the idea that if I observe you working uh, I, and you have a child and I can infer something negative about your yeah. work, then <coughs> no. no, no, but uh, I can see whether you have a child or not. And this is observable. So I treat you and perhaps differently if you don't. Eh? Here, they are kind of, yeah. Yes, yes, this exactly, that, that's exactly all this, yes, in the calibration will of course appear because I will focus on women with child, w single. So I try, you know, the quantitative I is trying to abstract of a lot of heterogeneity that are can be important, of course, and maybe the econometrics I don't see and so on and so forth. Eh? But uh, let me go just to, the, to have the principle quickly and then, uh, you know, the quantitative part is more interesting, I guess, for this audience uh, and I'm really happy to receive any any suggestion at least to improve uh, in the dimensions uh, of the minima things? Yeah? Back to this question that Klaus is asking. I mean, so the non, the, the non travelers are not in this model at all, and fertility does is taken into this. Completely exogenous. So this is self financing within the type. It's not going to be self financing. It's probably. So you're going to count on the, the, the rest of society to help pay for Yeah, I will estimate how much I can count the rest of society. You know, uh, in the, yes, 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 yes. This is going, is not going to matter, uh, it's going to matter, but uh, the principle is not depending on whether it should be self-financing or not. The, the principle, at least. The quantitative part, maybe. So what the government do, does, is uh, observe productive, uh, you know, it cannot observe the productivities, and actually there is uh, this work of opportunities. People can always claim they don't get, uh, no work opportunity, okay? So it's kind of sort of mass at zero if you want to call it. What you can observe is uh, agent earnings and the formal childcare costs. Hmm? How much uh, really, spend? Really, this is all something that, that bothers me about this leadership. How hard it is to ask the same company and other good forms of money, how was your hired for? 
So is observability of that? You mean? No, what do you yeah. say? No. Yeah, yeah. I, I have this extension where it's not observable. Yes. Uh, Ah, the Mirlis, yes, yes. I, I do agree, actually. The original version here was, uh, um, yeah, I mean, I, I actually started by having a completely, so uh, started having completely different dimensions in the sense that uh, more about how much I care about my kid and this kind of characteristics and having observable Z, in a sense, because I can observe hours. Uh, then, I, I mean, this is uh, the other project. I will show only one picture of, uh, of this part of the project. Here, I, I want just to make point of very simple Mirlis, but I agree that uh, one can question even the, the basic yeah. assumption. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you could, of course. Uh, the, the typical yeah. typical yeah. answer yeah. is. Uh, No, you no, can. But it's still, 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 I want to measure how costly is. I, I want, this is what is very important is, I understand that this is, uh, 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 I don't have a budget uh, uh, on equal to one. I just say that that's the amount. So if it's costly, it's costly. I'm not saying, uh, you know, in that sense, it can be effort, you know, like, uh, but anyway, uh, um, so uh, I'm trying to be pretty standard because I want just to make the point of the basic thing. So um, at least that's the first step to understand it. I repeat, uh, there is a, I will explain quickly um, how, where we are going, actually. Um, that's the budget constraint. And as you can see, the budget constraint has this M that has to be estimated, which is basically how much society transfers to this group of individuals. Huh? So that's a parameter we will estimate. So the, um, the typical problem is you, the government is trying to pull utilitarian once you specify the utility of consumption, uh, is maximizing the welfare, ex ante welfare of these individuals. Uh, there is a budget constraint, just to explain, there is the user incentive compatibility constraint, which uh, basically says, you know, the right uh, way of writing is like the equilibrium uh, like uh, the, the allocation is emerged must be so that people want to tell the truth. So they can lie about the Z and the allocation will be designed so that they don't want to lie. And sigma is any lie. So we know that you can only say I have a different productivity by the revelation Easy. principle. Um, so that's <coughs> very basic point of this uh, is uh, if you don't have incentive <laughs> compatibility, then the perfect redistribution mm, is, is feasible. You have production efficiency that is you will have uh, uh, that the only reason for having uh, some internal activity, so not spending the whole need in formal child care, is because your productivity is below the cost of the child care. Otherwise, you just work and use a formal child care. So these two conditions say that actually this allocation is not incentive compatible because you like to give the same consumption to everybody and ask the more productive they have to work. This means that it's not incentive compatible. Um, hence, uh, we want to study the optimal policy. Very quickly, actually, how much time do you have? 31 minutes. Okay. The optimal policy is not that obvious, even if, you know, I repeat, uh, we studied the, the multidimensional uh, screening kind of problem because of the other dimension. But here, even if there is only Z, the problem is not a uh, standard one. Just because there are two dimensions. Eh? So, you know, typically when you solve this problem, you have the, you know, you, you ask monotonicity typically on Y, and then together with the assumption I made in the utility functions, you, you have a concavity of the agent problem, and weak condition of monotonicity is actually necessary, so you can start imposing, and you ask whether is, uh, uh, there is bunching or not, okay? Here, the, the, the equivalent necessary condition is something that combines uh, how much uh, uh, total effort changes weighted by, this is the, the, elasti uh, the elasticity parameter, weighted by income. And so this is a kind of more complicated condition to handle with. In particular, you cannot require monotonicity 
in both of them, in fact, is not going to be true because this is weakly decreasing, so it's not good. Hmm? So you have to characterize and see whether, you know, actually the allocation you characterize is incentive compatible by, tend to make, by, by trying to make some, uh, say, relaxed problem, okay? So what we get out of this strategy is a kind of property that uh, were expected. So consumption and income are increasing productivity and also the use of formal child care costs. So you, again, there is this idea weakly increasing that uh, if you are more productive, you tend to use more the formal childcare sector uh, because you want to work more. Okay. And the other aspect that there are the wages they are all positive. So essentially, the constraint is always binding, binding downward. And to see how you can check very quickly the the validity of the concavity condition uh, that became Sofrani Z. Uh, uh, global, you, this is from simulation, but it's a very easy check. That's what we got. Basically, you have every time that uh, a child care subsidies, uh, the use of formal child care is not full, is because you are kind of unemployed, so you don't work. If you work, the amount of child care is positive. So basically, you always have either this derivative equal to zero, eh, because uh, this is fixed, or if this is not positive, which is bad, because this can be negative, is, is going to be negative, you have this equal to zero. So this condition is always satisfied, at least uh, very easy to check uh, uh, in, in, in our results. Okay? Um, so I I this condition to be checked is not that difficult in our, in our simulation, but in general is more complicated. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I will explain in what sense I have the implementation that is different here. Yeah, okay. well, well. your, 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 your explanation here that, you know, why is it less than instead of, of more than, I don't see the link between this and this result that you have an taxation of income. You say, you know, those guys, uh, yeah, those well, guys here actually would be, could be actually, this is not because of that, but it could be because of that in a sense, right? Because if you distort basically zero, these guys, I mean. Yeah, it's not going to be binding for them in that sense, right? Because they don't face attacks, so they get the full return on what they work, so why omega is, is much la lower? So they don't want to go that in that sense. It's going to be. Uh, I, I'm going to argue for a different thing. It's going to be okay, uh, not the, but yeah, okay. I'm interested in what happens to the top income. I'm not going to fork because they are, uh, uh, but <laughs> you know. No, there will be a top well, here as well, but you know, okay. Okay. Um, you answer a question. You want to know what the property of the quality of C are provided. You don't want to change the quality the, the, the distribution is bound to the both. So the zero tax result on the top is always there. But we are not talking about the tax. We are talking about the wedge. The wedge is going to be zero for those guys. And then the, the tax, yeah, there is a link. Uh, let no, it's not because of that. I will explain why. Okay. What is the principle? But yeah, it could be. Okay, fine. Uh, you could. But they are single mother with kids, and but you know, yes, no, no, I agree, I agree. I, I just I, I, I don't focus on this point because I think the principles are a bit different. So, so let me say the the wages, as long as I mean, a, apart from the top, this should be weak inequality. You have uh, these two wages positive, eh? or weakly positive, and. Um, what they say, so I want to focus, this is basically positive tax, people typically, in the typical mere list, they read it as a positive marginal tax. And this one I, is the one I want to focus, is again, those are on wedges, okay? So this just distortion of the guy for a specific uh, uh, equilibrium declaration, okay? This is related to the childcare uh, margin, Okay, so this already seems to be, no, normally is read as a subsidy. You know, if you have this margin, means that 
this guy has a, a, a value of, uh, um, of supplying an extra work inside the family is the value is omega u prime and the cost is v prime so you would like to supply some uh, some uh, some hours inside so you have to distort this decision by having a subsidy so that the the, the value is not any more omega because because of the subsidy but is below omega so you, this seems to be but in fact what is uh, relevant is not this margin okay this margin is a margin that is uh, related to what you would like to do if you don't lie right here the whole point will be that what matters here is going to be the joint deviation. This, if I put a tax according to this wedge or a subsidy according to this wedge, I won't be able to generate efficient allocation. So I have to focus on joint deviations and that's what is going to shape my, my subsidy. So the joint deviation of lying and, and undertaking in these childcare activities. This is the whole point that is shaping the subsidy. I will uh, quickly go through the proposition and then um, essentially this is a way of implementing, if you want, is a partial implementation because I decided what I call subsidy, uh, but it's all about, again, on the declaration still. Um, and is in some sense the minimal sufficient. So uh, I, I'm not going to impose taxes that are larger than what is needed but at least i'm sure that i can guarantee that these taxes these subsidies implement efficient allocation okay so there is a, a subsidy uh, for employed people and of course then as a consequence a transfer payment for them that is implemented efficient allocation here another kind of subsidy rate for unemployed people that i'm not going to focus here but uh, is uh, is much lower and then there are also guys uh, that report between zero and omega that the implementation will require two rates but as i explained there is nobody at least in our simulations that is in this range so I, I i will spare you the time to see the two wedges so let me focus on that one because i want to focus on em employed uh, women so this is the subsidy rate is a kind of large one is um it is controlling for the joint deviation. So as I repeat, I just said, the possibility of undertaking childcare activities um, generate an extra cost of providing some uh, uh, redistribution because increases the agent private return from uh, deviating. That is, the agent pretend to be low type and increase childcare so that he saves on formal childcare costs. Okay, this is what we want to do. The key point of this is to show that the, the most, the, the one that you have to prevent are the one at the top. That's why there is Z max here, okay? That me, must be prevented, okay, to deviate. But, you know, they prevent, they must be prevented to deviate, and when they deviate, they have a different income than their income, okay? So the, cha the, the subsidy is function of the actual income where they want to deviate, not the income of the guy that should be in equilibrium, okay? So the shape is, uh, uh, is done though to target to the top guys anyway, okay? So the result is, number one, by construction is positive because those top guys, you want to implement zero childcare yeah, for the working guys. So is, there is no need to have a negative one. It can be zero, that's fine, totally fine. If, uh, uh, if inside of many negative, so by almost by construction, but you know, because the margin is weakly positive, is, uh, is always positive or, or zero. And the other aspect is very simple. The characteristic of the allocation shows that the consumption and income are increasing with, uh, with sigma, so they, they will go together with y. So when y goes up, this marginal cost goes up, and this is going down, so this ratio goes up. So they are going to be decreasing with the income, okay? So you have a sliding scale uh, just coming from the characteristic of the allocation and the fact that you have to target these guys for the subsidy, okay? So those are the principles that are, again, this joint deviation, and who is the guy that wants to do the joint deviation is that. This, together with the characteristic of the optimal allocation, gives you positivity and sliding scale. 
So now this is the principle, stop, fin, okay? And this is going to be always like that, uh, unless you don't have other aspects of the model that changes the fact that the top guy wants to deviate or the, these kind of things, okay? Uh, okay. So the quantitative analysis, uh, I have 20 minutes, okay? So here is an attempt and uh, I would like uh, Yes, yes, it, the quantitative. No, that, that don't give a number, say a graph, so that is useful. You don't take the number seriously, you shouldn't do that. We like to know the shapes, which is what you really characterize better. But the shapes, uh, the exact shapes, in order to do a graph, I need the number. Because uh, I, I will show you, because of the calibration, and this is going to be a typical shape, <coughs> sense. Typical in terms of. Yeah, you could, you, of course. Like, I have saved and I could just record the load type and then you want to have the pass rate decreasing in current Are you in the, the Kocherak Lakota kind of thing? So the principle of joint deviation is, uh, is very similar uh, in the sense that that's correct. There is an extra margin you want to discourage. The question is, which, the, which side, so it could be positive or negative, so the principle is going to be positive because that's the reason you want. In the optimal capital taxation literature, is coming from a completely different reason. There is this inverse Euler equation you want to save because of different things. Eh? Yeah, no, I mean, of course. I mean, the question is whether this margin will drive positive or negative. So yes, the pr kind of basic, basic principle, it is like that. Uh, but there, the sliding, the, the fact that uh, th there are many ways to implement it. I will implement in a linear way. There, the, the Kocherak-Lakot implementation is one of, of the many possible. There is mean test as well on the asset. It's more depending on the asset. The way, so the principle for which he has income dependent on capital tax is comp a bit different in his case. Uh, here is, I think, is because the, the deviating guy is the top guy. In this case, is because uh, of the marginal return is, uh, is actually function, direct function of the or income, which is, but maybe it's related. I don't know exactly the, the relationship with that same. So what do we do? We focus on very specific group, a single mother with, uh, uh, child with at least one children below six uh, in the US. The model is so simple that there are not so many parameters to, to calibrate. I'm assuming log consumption. Uh, the, there is this uh, elasticity that you hear in a static model. Uh, Katie says you cannot call much uh, Marshallian or Frisch in you know, like static model. Eh? So let's call it elasticity and leave it like that. And uh, effort uh, cost parameter again uh, will match the average hours again. Um, the market productivity. We have this margin that is important for them, which is they are lucky uh, they don't work and they are, don't have opportunity to work because this is important to distinguish this group from the one that may have the opportunity to work, but because there is childcare need, they may decide not to work, which is not in the mere list model. Eh? Uh, then we s normalize childcare needs of one hour, but then we need to know what is the unit or measure for E, because once we decide what means one hour. Eh? So how much is omega, this parameter, and how much money this group receives from the society? The summary statistic of these uh, women. Do you finance it by a lump sum tax? Sorry? How do you finance the child care subsidy? There is a money here coming from, I don't explain how. Lump sum. Yeah. I will take a sort of revealed preferences. I compute M coming from the existing scheme. This means that the society want to give M to these people. And I keep it like the same number. Yeah, can I ask a basic logical yeah. question? Yeah. Use your definition of the optimal scheme, which goes together with an optimal tax rate. We yeah. know that in reality, the tax rate goes further than that. Yes. The optimal tax rate in particular, the, the marginal tax rate on the top people is the highest in self being Yeah. So there is absolutely no reason to believe that the election goes for some reasons not to believe. No, this would be a third 
third the best uh, exercise. I'm going, I can do it. I mean, this, uh, we, we didn't do it. I can do it. I think here is. Uh, exactly. You, I didn't do the third best exercise. This is what you're suggesting would be a third best exercise. I, I cannot change the income tax. Let's see what the uh, subsidies are. Mm -hmm. What you've done is, for instance, to come back to my point, mm -hmm. I think in the real world there is a, a, a strong case for subsidizing child care for high income people because we want those people to work and those people are faced with the highest marginal rate. Of course, you tell, you're telling me in my own moment, well, that's not the case because those people are the ones with the zero wage. Fine, but, but then, you know, what you're going to say here is, 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 uh, is what you want to do. I, 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 I totally agree. I would like to see the third best and uh, um, eh? I can totally do because the calibration will be based on existing scheme. So I can do it. I mean, uh, so I mean, le let me say how much time I have. So in this, in this respect, I would like uh, um, to understand. So if one uh, has to also uh, it sometimes is uh, you say okay. When I do this third best exercise, I would lo though like to understand at least uh, <coughs> there is a political, economic, or something that drives these taxes like that. Because if I really don't understand why, okay. I mean uh, maybe it's difficult <coughs> to do also this exercise conceptually. But I understand the point. As long as I can argue, ah, it's because political, economy, because lobbies, they don't whatever. Mm -hmm. the will be inter in front of you. Mm -hmm. So take, take the optimal tax, tax benefit schedule under this country, and see if you know, sometimes you go to justify the, the existing, and then mm -hmm. what you can do. So, let, 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 let me say. Question. It's more motivated by the remark you made at the beginning, which I find completely illuminating, that you're not facing. <laughs> no, I invented this morning because I saw, you know, yeah, I said, let's try to justify what I do, but uh, instead. Uh, uh, maybe I should have thought also the consequences of that, but you know. Uh, <laughs> so, let me, so, okay, uh, one possibility is good, I will do, I don't know what's the outcome, but let me speculate just one minute, given I have 12 minutes, so. Uh, <laughs> The mechanism of targeting the top is true here even if the tax, as you said, is zero. So if they are taxed, it would be even more reasonable to target those guys. So I would say that uh, uh, a certain characteristic like sliding scale, not the numbers, but this characteristic, I, I'm, I'm guessing they could be similar, at least. I mean, but. Uh, Sorry? Yeah, but here the subsidy is what they want to do. They want to lie because they are otherwise I do just with the taxes and we don't know. We don't want to, this distortion I cannot touch. So the only distortion I can touch is when they don't declare their income. Uh, well, you're right. Maybe even for those people. Yeah, you're right. No, no, you're right. They would be um, <coughs> still relevant for them, the small cost. I'm not sure. Is binding? So the tax on the top is so large that actually they would like, in the real world, to save a child, formal childcare. I'm not sure, but anyway, it's no speculation. It's no speculation. So would be, I will do it totally, totally. In the third best policy, I will do it. Okay. So let me explain how we. So these uh, women basically have, on average, uh, children under six or one point twenty-eight, and uh, overall children are uh, like two. Uh, those are their characteristics, I think. Uh, um, you know, it's like you know more than what I do, those characteristics of these women, they are very young and so on and so forth. So just to think uh, that also this, uh, this kind of uh, application, although it seems to be a small modification, merely is requires, is also the computation of the wage distribution that could affect, we know it affects a lot, the, the margin of the taxes. And he, especially at the bottom though, you know, we here there is a there is a censoring, eh? and there is a reason for censoring in the Mirlis model. 
you just work because you don't have any other way of doing things and normally you assume that the marginal cost of working epsilon hour is zero. So there is no argument for uh, having a reservation wage really because there is no activity in the household. Here we do have to have this correction. We do it in a very simple way is the user Ekman to step selection correction method. Just tell you quickly the exclusion restriction we, we, we use as a, as a variable that is affecting the participation but not the wage. So the wage can be affected having children, this could affect and so on and so forth, but condition having children, having a children that is uh, uh, below six. This is going to be the one that is affecting the participation, uh, but uh, hopefully not the wage. Okay? We uh, do sophisticated things I will explain because actually the health of the woman will uh, depends, affects the, the hours and we have this information the much. So, so here is the wage distribution. Uh, this censoring does not change very much, uh, but at the bottom some, uh, some, uh, some effects are there. Uh, so the values are the benchmark one is the gamma is equal to one. I will also study higher, uh, gamma higher. For women, I think this is a, a lower bound, but again, all this context dependent is particularly is a static model. So, um, so then we have this um, want to match hours worked uh, uh, overall for the theta. The, 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 the pi z is just the computational wage, which is earnings divided by hours of work. And then this is p, the people are lucky. We do as a benchmark p equal. Well, eleven percent, which is the involuntary unemployed people that say. Why, why, why do you observe hours of work that the government does? Should you use the parallel scheme to infer what your E is rather than to look at at the one you say that you literally take the model to recover five or six? Yeah, the, the other flip it would be why are you actually believing that you can use hours instead of effort? So you. You have to take the maximization problem and do the op. Yes, that's what I. No. Ah, ah, yes, true. Yeah. You know, I, I don't use the first of the condition of the guy yeah. for for yeah. Yes, yes, do. yes. No, I do it for this parameter. I do it uh, for no, others. No, uh, so, but I understand. No, no, I agree. The DLC that you see with the current tax system would not generate the hours that you get to go from the day. And at least you should do that. So, yes, I could. Uh, uh, so, I will never be able with this very little heterogeneity to match this for any productivity because it will only be one. But I could try. Uh, what I'm trying to do is essentially an integral version of the amount of hours worked and so on and so forth. But it's true. I could do the hours uh, uh, margin z by z. That's what you're saying. No, no, what I'm saying is use your model. Hmm. For any z. To, and the current tax system that you see in the horizon to recover what the pi of z is in, to see what your income is. Yeah, I see. Yeah, that is what you mean. I say a certain income level, I should take first order condition and see how many hours this guy do, for z by z. Um, that's, that's another way, you, you could do this in that sense. Uh, um, very rough in that sense here. It's a bit inconsistent with having effort in a sense, or at least not using this information. Sometimes you do have, uh, use the, the point of saying, yeah, hours are observed to econometricia, but uh, there are uh, things that the economists can see, but the government yeah, but can't. Okay, so <coughs> something better I do by so, but I need to group by group because otherwise it's all about say the elasticity, changing hours. Uh, you know, you, you measure the elasticity in that. Okay, so. In, in, is all about that. It could be heterogeneous elasticity. What, what we do something better is still group by group. There is a theta. There are different groups. We have five groups of theta, heterogeneating theta. So we, we still have conditional distribution of wages for these groups that are health um, levels. 
and there we match hours per group, which is kind of still coarser than uh, productivity by productivity, but at least is uh, an integral that is not all over the population, but at least subgroups. If I narrow down and down and down, I get uh, to, to the z. Because, I repeat, in order to do the, the hour for a z, I, I need to consider whether there is heterogeneity within a z across them. And I need to guess what it is. You know, for example, as uh, OK. So here, very quickly, the, the cost here is 5.10 because it's basically roughly a bit less than uh, uh, $4 per hour, the cost when you put the kid in childcare. And uh, this multiplied by 1.28 is the benchmark we get. And then we also consider the possibility that actually you multiply by the two kids, uh, so you get a, high, a larger number. This is, again, how much the existing schemes transfer to these people is basically computed by, by computing all net of this group uh, existing scheme, say uh, the, 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 the earned income tax credit, all the child be care be uh, benefits minus the taxes, how much actually overall for this group the US system gives, which is uh, the, the, that amount of money. OK. Ah, uh, here. The, how many hours of childcare need, of formal childcare need, potential formal childcare needs, are for these people? We need to calibrate that. And here, what we do is essentially say, OK, we consider first like uh, uh, a week, uh, a woman has to work 40 hours. And we observe that there are 16 hours provided by grandmothers and the father. OK, so we say, OK, the remaining 24 hours that she has to work. Uh, they must be provided in a certain way, either by this, you have to pay for them, okay? We do robustness by having 34, by assuming that, you know, the hours of work per week are 50 because of commuting, whatever, and see how things change with this robustness, okay? That's what we do. Okay, so the first, the optimal allocation, the optimal allocation, as I, as I was saying, uh, you have a very bank bank kind of thing, so whenever earnings are positive, this jumps to zero whenever you know this jumps to a number that uh, in most of the case actually is a full uh, pro provision of child care from from the, the guy but uh, sometimes is not full then you have earning to zero so the scheme is incentive compatible and you have increasing consumption which uh, in principle comparing earning with consumption should give you a sort of tax but in fact in order to understand the tax in this environment you need to decide what you do the implementation, OK? So first of all, what we do is, in this case, we can implement the scheme with a linear subsidy. So f, the linearity is coming from the fact that uh, it's linear in f. It's not always possible, for example. Uh, so here, we basically say, OK, y is minus the tax. And then you have the subsidy that is depending on y. And we, normal, we need to normalize, because you can always put one inside of the other. So this S is exactly the wedge I was mentioning before, the, the positive part of the wedge. So that way, you get a marginal tax. This is not the, the usual one, because this implementation has also this S that is changing with Y. So the marginal tax is not the Mulis one, because of this element. And in particular, this, this, this derivative is negative. So the marginal tax is going to be lower, especially for low income levels, than the wedge. OK? And then, of course, I'm not going to show you the marginal tax now. I don't have time. Uh, but uh, I'm showing the average tax, which is, uh, as you would guess, right? Income minus uh, to everything you get uh, from, from the government, in a sense. OK? So the picture is, uh, uh, see, oh, OK, first, the other thing is, I was mentioning to you the, the deviation that implements the allocation, but one would like to see also the local joint deviation. That is, instead of deviating the best you can, you deviate locally, like by lying one step down. The subsidy correct for local and global deviations uh, is more meant for, for the global deviation. So we want to check whether these uh, uh, local deviations are important or not. Uh, so as, as you can see, basically, the um, the top guys, at least with this uh, uh, tax scheme, actually, is kind of telling that uh, it's true. This is exactly what you say. For them, the, the joint deviation wedge is, uh, is roughly zero when you tax at the optimal tax. 
Uh, if you tax more, you should subsidize them. This is local. That's, that's uh, immediately coming from here. Yes, good point, okay. The average tax, what is, I'm focusing in the childcare subsidy rate, okay, how this changes with earning, and in all parameterization, pretty robust, is pretty sliding scale, is, is starting very large, which is consistent with existing scheme in a sense. Uh, actually, is a bit less generous. These dots are the existing one for like this average group of guy, uh, median uh, uh, state in the US. So they are larger, they start 100% and actually they decrease always uniformly larger. So what we did, okay, maybe the reason why we get uh, so low subsidies because we don't have enough heterogeneity. Maybe we are really saying the only difference among these people is productivity, but there are other aspects. So here we do, I don't explain exactly uh, the details. I knew I would have been uh, short in time. So this is the picture of a more general model where they have also another dimension of heterogeneity, which is the health status. We can calibrate that because we observe in the data, but uh, the scheme also has this actual dimension of heterogeneity, which has the property of giving some heterogeneity on the taste with respect to the kid implicitly. Eh? So you see that uh, the optimal schemes became uh, much closer to the existing ones, at least. Uh, when I did many simulations. Some of them, they are kind of, uh, but they are all, again, from the baseline to different uh, uh, changes of, of the parameters, OK? So that's, uh, I mean, the, the model that is closer to what uh, we would like to consider as a more quantitative exercise, a bit richer, still static. So we would like to do a richer one. For example, uh, studying how other characteristics that are not included here uh, affect the scheme. And it, we think that uh, is going to be important because there are many aspects of, uh, of that. I'm not sure is, uh, you know, Education seems to be, you know, politically correct, but others, there is this argument, uh, you know, use argument tagging, whether it's fair or politically acceptable or not. The main dimension is the childcare production. And of course, if you want to face married couples here, I, the scope was very restrictive. Then you have to take into account what happens within the family and could be very complicated. In particular, there are transfers between them. <coughs> Um, the dynamic considerations are, of course, neglect. I can do the dynamic uh, simulation of this model, uh, no problem in a sense, you know, it's not a big deal. Uh, actually, you know, just add capital taxes and then do simulations. Uh, people did it for the standard mere lease, I can do it for this model, not a big deal. But, you know, here we, there is an ongoing project with the same quarter where we kind of study more about uh, this dimension of childcare. Um, and the joint design of these programs, in particular uh, the child care subsidies, with social security, because uh, she finds, for example, there are a lot of time transfer from the grandmother to the to the to the daughters, the, the granddaughters. So in that sense, there is a margin that can affect even retirement or participation of grandmothers, and child care subsidies can affect that because of intra-temporal transfers of uh, of money. Okay. So this is, again, the three points that was mentioned before. Uh, positive childcare, sliding scale makes sense, and yet apparently a bit too generous, uh, the existing ones, although. Mm -hmm. yeah, but the existing ones, you're just taking the, what is in the books. What people get is much less. In many states, there are a long waiting list, and no, when you look at the who actually gets it, no, it's true. people than, 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 than the, the, the book. There is a percentage, you know, in the calibration, we actually took into account that only a, f a small fraction of them uh, take it and so on and so forth. Uh, it's true. Could be, yeah, you're right. So maybe the optimum, yeah, <laughs> little. But why people don't take it uh, is a no question in this paper, actually. But uh, OK, thank you. <laughs>